Hey guys, we're gonna get straight into it. In this video, we're gonna be looking at my whole new wiring and ECU for your K24 DC5. And yes, we have a Nexus R3. So guys, this is it. We are finally on the engine management side of the car. And by finally, I mean we finally purchased and pulled the trigger on what direction to go and what's happening. Uh, confirmed. So this is the confirmed setup for the K24 DC5 engine management side. We will be going Haltech Nexus R3, which is just released. Um, I pulled the trigger on this, did a lot of planning and thinking with Adam from Just Engine Management and Wasim from Just Engine Management, and they really helped me out. And they were able to grab me a Nexus R3 with a bunch of sensors, a IC7, and of course, a flying harness. Now I'm gonna go through everything with you guys, uh, what ECU, what ECU can do, um, the sensors that I have got for now, um, the IC7 and what the flying loom is. And of course, I'm gonna tell you why I went with this direction and why I need it for a car like my K24 DC5, which could easily run on stock loom, stock ECU, K Tuner, uh, K Pro, uh, even um, Elite Series ECUs. So let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna show you guys is of course, the beautiful Nexus R3. Now I have opened it already just to see because I was very excited. Um, here we go, so that's opening like this, opening like this, and look at this cool thing. It still like kind of gives me goosebumps when I open it. Nexus R3, made in Australia by Haltech. Yeah bro, look at that. That is a beautiful ECU and I love it. I'm very happy to say this is mine. Um, I've worked with a lot of cars before, a lot of filming and media for other cars. And, um, this is finally my own car. You know, I've seen I've seen a lot of different ECUs. I've held different ECUs, filmed, touched, talked about, and um, helped others with different ECUs. But uh, this is the first time where this is actually mine. It's been a long time coming, a very long time coming for this car, and uh, it's safe to say that you know this is my first Haltech, and I'm very excited. So that's the Nexus R3. Um, we'll talk a bit more about it later. I just want to unbox everything first. That's that. In this box you get, um, this is a component kit, you basically just get USB that has the software on it and other things, accessories and all that for the ECU like mounting brackets, that's the USB, of course these, I forgot what these are called but these are the terminals, they go in here, we've got a USB-C cable, hearing, uh, and Wi-Fi antenna, USB-C cable and stickers. So that's the Nexus side. Now, um, like I said, we're gonna talk about all, everything in depth after. Right now, we're just gonna do a quick unboxing. So I do wanna keep this video short and sweet for you guys, and not drag everything on like I do with everything else. That's the Nexus. What's this big ass thing? How to IC7. Now, I wasn't getting an IC7, but it's always good to have another set of dash. So this IC7 will not actually replace my current dash. I will be keeping the current dash, the analog uh, K25, K25, DC5 dash. Oh, look at this. Haltech IC7 display dash. Again, same thing with this. I've seen many IC7 dashes. I've taken photos and videos of many IC7 dashes. I've held different ones, but when it's your own one, for your own car, for your own cool, you know, race car, it's something else, man. It feels something like something else. This is actually mine. To say this is actually mine is, is you know, very emotional, almost. So that's the IC7. Brand new. Everything here is brand new from Haltech. Just got dropped off yesterday. I'm very excited. That's the IC7. So um, I'll talk about it later, but with the IC7, yeah, it's not gonna replace the um, factory dash. I still wanna keep the factory dash. But I'm actually gonna get a Type R dash, uh, cluster, sorry, and put it in the car to keep that part analog. And this is gonna be side mounted uh, and display telemetry and all the other things that I would like to have. That's that. What does, does this come with? I have no idea. What's this? IC7 component kit one. So I'm guessing a bunch of wires and things. Yeah, just a bunch of cables and stuff which will look at later when we go to installing the IC7, which will be in a while anyway. So this is just a quick unboxing. Um, I keep saying that, but yeah, quick unboxing just to show you guys. Because it's gonna be a while until all of this is installed properly in the car. 
because there's a lot of wiring to do. That's the RC7. Um, if you want to have a look at more of the Nexus and the, the RC7 and everything, I will be taking nice photos and uh, uploading them to my Instagram, so make sure you follow us on Instagram. Um, before we get to this bag, um, there was this like shady deal for Haltech, which is why I got the hat, and we also got this for free as well, so the hat, and this mounting kit, which is actually very um, convenient as to what I want to do in the car, because I'm going to have this side mounted, uh, side mounted inside above the gear shifter. So let's say the shifter's here, and my signal is here, shifter's down here, I want it to be up like this, so when I'm driving I can see in the corner of my eye, telemetry and stuff. Telemetry for everything, you know, what if I want to have GPS, RGs, uh, We'll see what we can do with the RC7. But that's the um, uh, mounting bracket kit, so thank you very much Haltech for that and the hat. I appreciate that. Right? Now, there is a whole bunch of sensors that you can go for um, for your car, for any car uh, with multiple different ACUs of different brands. Um, but even with Haltech, there's a multitude of sensors that I don't have here that you can implement and that I will be implementing. But uh, to get this car started up, running and tuned, I'm um, driving perfectly. Uh, these are the sensors that you need. So, first up, we have two two Bosch fluid pressure and temp sensors. Now, they do both pressure and temp, but you can just do one. So, I have two of these sensors for a reason. Um, one is for oil pressure, and one is for fuel pressure. Now, it is also a temp sensor. So, what you can do is. Um, a reminder that the fuel is fuel pressure, not fuel pressure temp. It's fuel pressure. So it, the sensor all, also does temp, but we're not going to be doing temp because we have a flex fuel sensor and the flex fuel sensor does composition and composition, which is like percentage and uh, temperature. So we're going to be doing temperature for the fuel pressure for fuel uh, through the flex fuel sensor. Now flex fuel is for running E85 and 98. So uh, at first I was gonna do straight E85 because race car life, but um, if I decide to go for a long drive or long trips, uh, road trips or whatever with the car, um, it's better to have flex sensor because we can run the car 98, you know, happy days, uh, there won't be any issues. And then once I get to where we're going, um, Jerry can E85, I'll find the nearest E85 and just put it in. But for long trips, um, 98 is a lot more reliable and efficient than using uh, E85 because we're filling up a lot. And the prices of E85s is still higher than 98 right now. So, race car life, E85, but road trips are driving 98. So that's a fuel, uh, fuel flex fuel composition sensor. Now this is uh, air temp sensor. Now you always need an air temp sensor. It's always good to have air temp. Um, air temp sensor is important because it detects the temperature of air coming into the engine. With this information, the ECU can control the air to fuel ratio needed for proper combustion and ignition. Um, I know it seems like I don't really know what I'm talking about. Half of it, I actually don't know what I'm talking about. But the more we progress with this car, obviously, the more I'm going to talk about it. And um, you guys are going to see these sensors a whole lot more when I get to install them. So that's why I'll explain everything in depth. The last bit of sensor we have here is the LSU 4.9 wideband hardware kit. So this is a pack, so with all, everything you need for the wide band, and I'm actually going to open it because for these, these are just sensors and pins, but I'm going to open this because it's a kit, so you guys can see what. If you get a bong, that will have to be welded somewhere. You get the wiring for the 4.9 LSU sensor. Uh, that looks like a, I forgot what this is called, a DTP pin, I think, which has its pins there. And of course, this is the uh, wide band sensor I believe. We can, if we can open this up. So I got my knife. Alright. We'll call it LSU sensor. That's the LSU sensor. Now um you're probably wondering if you don't know much about the Nexus is uh where's my wideband? So the Nexus R3 actually has an onboard wideband controller so um, that's why I don't think we actually need that wideband controller. And this is the because this has the this is the 4.9 wideband hardware anyway. So um, this will all be done through this connected to the ECU, which has the onboard wideband anyway. So that's the wideband.
Now here we have the Haltech basic universal wiring harness for Nexus R3 VCU. Now VCU, um, it's not called ECU, it's actually called VCU, which is vehicle control unit because um, the Nexus does a whole lot more than just um, electronically controlling, you know, everything, electronic computer unit. It's actually controlling a lot of things in the vehicle. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do, um, but we'll talk about that now. So this is a basic universal wiring harness. There is no, at this point in time, there is no plug and play uh, kits for the Nexus because uh, the Nexus is a different pin, a uh, different number of pins on the ECU than the Elite Series. Elite Series has plugins, um, so there's no plugins for the Nexus yet. I'm sure it's doable, but we're going to be doing a proper wire for this car. So, as you can see, there's a ton of wires here. There's a ton of wiring here that we're going to use, and there's probably a ton of wiring that we're not going to use. But this is the basic harness kit, it is 2.5 meters, which I think is, is enough for us. Um, but we'll be obviously cutting, but as you can see, there's plenty of wires, there's plenty of wires everywhere. Everything is marked. Like this one says wide band, this is, this is CAN 1, this is CAN 2, and all these wires, they're marked as well. I'll we'll just find one. I've got this, this, this roll here, it says AVI 1 to 7, I don't know what that is. We have SPI 1 to 4, so there's a lot of, yeah, here, um, battery ground, uh, trigger, Knock one, which is knock sensor, I believe. There's plenty of wiring, but that's a lot of wiring there. So I'm, I'm actually very keen. You know, I'm very excited to learn um, about this, how to do this. And I will be wiring the whole car by myself. You know, as long as it takes as much brain power as it needs, um, Sama and everyone will be helping me. But yeah, this is the uh, engine management package for the K24 DC5 Haltech Nexus R3 IC7 display. Um, uh, Bosch, I mean the LS 4.9 sensor, wideband kit, two air pressure, uh, one air pressure, one air temp sensor, two uh, fluid pressure and temp sensors, which is fuel pressure and oil pressure, and also we have a flex fuel sensor with our universal wire harness. Now, this is the this is where I start talking a bit. Why did I choose to go this route? Now. The route for the car has changed um, over the past year. Um, when I first bought the car, I wanted to go straight turbo, build the motor, everything, but that was very costly and it was going to take a very long time and I would get zero seat time and go straight from straight from zero to 400 kilo, which is a massive jump and which will require a lot of setup and everything, which is not the route I want to go for now. Um, after that, the route changed from that to circuit car, uh, proper NA circuit car, and that's what's happening right now. So the car is still going to be an NA uh, circuit car um, as a first version, so version 1, I'd say version 1, V1 of the K24 DC5 is NA, um, obviously not stock because it has already has a few couple engine mods we can check out already, um, upgrades, fuel and all that, all, um, blah blah blah, you guys can have a look at the channel. The car will be NA. The car will make a bit more than stock power than NA, which I hope it makes at least 150 kilowatt. That's what it should make, but I really want to make something like 180. I want to push it just a little bit. And that's that. That's version one pretty much. But uh, we've also got some upgrades of the car for future proofing, just like what we have right now. Now, the big question is why? Before I say why, I want to also say that we have also have a keypad coming, a 15 keypad, um, which is going to have a lot of functions on the keypad. I'm sure you've seen the Haltech keypad. Uh, I'll show you guys that uh, when it comes. There's a quick here, here's a keypad, blah, blah, blah. But that's the key, that's that. The reason why we're doing all that keypad, IC7, um, R3, completely new wiring. I've already explained why we're doing the new wiring. is because I want to do it really clean. And I don't want to hack and slash. I don't want this to be perfect so that I don't have to do this again. And we're going to be getting every function working in this car. I don't just mean the engine side, I mean the accessory side, dash, yeah, aircon, all of that. The car's still going to have aircon for now. But why? And the why is because this DC5 is going to become a proper race car. I'm a proper circuit car. So I'm going to have street registered. It's going to be street registered probably just for a little bit, just to drive around here and there to the track, blah, blah, blah. But um, officially, this car is going full send on 
track on track mode, on circuit mode, which is why I've got this ECU. This ECU can do a lot of things, a lot of different outputs, a lot of different control, ignition control, fuel, air temp. Like obviously, that's those are some some of those things the Elite Series can do. But I also need a PDM now. The the R3 is also a PDM, and what that is is the power distribution model. And we need that for a circuit car. There's a lot of things that we're gonna have circuit car. A lot of sensors, a lot of um, external fans and um, buttons and things that the car will have to do while on track. And the R3 is capable, a lot more capable than the Elite series for doing a circuit thing. So like things like pit limiters, um, G meters, um, ride height, this traction control, like proper traction control which is based on wheel speed and you know it's very complicated it's very in-depth there's a lot of things that the ECU can do VCU can do um, which is why I want to go there route I'd rather have a lot more options than buy something that's going to limit me right at the end and then I'll have to upgrade later so I've obviously um, how can you say um, over, over, over overkilled right now with this ECU because it's like it's like bro you've bought this all this kit for a car that's gonna make 150 kilo or NA well yeah of course because it's a circuit car and it's not gonna be NA forever definitely not uh, once all the suspension is dialed in and ready to go that car's gonna give you turbo the car's gonna be a proper circuit car which is gonna be quick so that's why I've chosen the Nexus VCU I think it'd be very cool to be obviously one of the first as well to have a Nexus R3 VCU in a DC5 with a K24 um, but yeah that's pretty much it that's the unboxing that's the reasoning it's because I want to do this properly and this car is gonna be a proper circuit car which I'm gonna race a lot um, this car will be entered into a lot of different things one day we'll definitely we will tower tech probably not this year I don't think the car will be 100% ready for uh, thrashing by world tower tech which is in September but definitely the car will be uh, you know, running by then, but I don't think I'll be confident enough to enter in such a big event like that. But definitely things like uh, you know, a rally, uh, or what it's called, tarmac rally sprint, stuff like that. Those small events, get the car in there, get the car noticed, get divine RPM notice, and then we'll go from there. But I'm very excited, very, very excited. I know I keep saying that, it's my first Haltech again, you know, it's very, I just love this thing, this IC7, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, that's i 7 the R3. But, Thank you for watching this video guys just a quick recap this is the engine management side of the k24 dc5 that's all i'm going to show you for now um, i won't show you this again until i need to either explain more things or when we're ready to start installing and wiring in the car but thank you so much for watching guys see you in the next video sorry guys i just wanted to add this extra part in at the time of filming this, I was pretty tired and had a lot of stuff happening. So I know that seemed like I wasn't explaining things properly, but I just wanted to put this in and let you guys know that I will be going deeper into this and explaining each of these things much, much more in detail. Uh, for example, I'm going to just have a video on the R3 and explain the capabilities of the R3 and what we're going to do with it uh, in a separate video, but that's going to be later when we're getting deeper into all this ECU side and stuff. So this is just... The unboxing and the reveal of what we're gonna do and I promise you guys that I will definitely learn more and go much more in detail into um, this side of things again thank you guys so much for the support thank you guys for watching see you guys next time